My name is Mike Rodriguez, and for the last 12 years, I've hosted a podcast called The Audio Nowcast with a bunch of my industry friends. I work in the audio industry, and this is the space where I mix. I spent a lot of time in here, and one day I decided it would be good to go outside. So I did. I traveled around the world, filming the unique spaces where audio is made, played, or listened to. This is Audio Nowcast Spaces. Holy smoke. This is like... Yes. This is the vision. Well, I tell you, when you walk into this room and you see the vision console and then you see your PMC monitors, I don't care what you're working on. You, <laughs> you just know it's going to sound amazing. Flight delay. You know those shots where I was all excited to get on the airplane. Delay. Hydraulic leak. I say fix the leak. I don't care as long as I hit Kendrick tonight. That's all I need. to Amsterdam and I'm tired. Hey, we're here for uh, episode like nine of Spaces in Amsterdam. We're gonna go to uh, Vista Lord Studios and just experience Amsterdam. How do you pronounce the studio? Visselord Studios. V Visselord. 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 Studios. Visselord Studios. I have a hard time with just regular names. No. <laughs> <laughs> let alone Visselord. <laughs> we're here for Audio Now Cast Spaces, and we're in Visselord Studios, and I'm here with Ronald Print. The studio is one of the most beautiful places, one of the most beautiful studios in the world. And we are qualified to say that because we've been <laughs> to a lot of great rooms around. I hear you travel a lot. Too. Yes, <laughs> yes. Tell us a little about the studio, um, a little bit about the history. 
Philips Phonogram built this in, uh, in the end of the 70s and in 1980 it opened um, as being one of the more uh, modern uh, studio facilities uh, around in Europe. It's originally designed by the art architect as a, as a meeting place. So the philosophy, the reason it's all stone and concrete is that when you're in there, uh, only your um, ear uh, senses are uh, stimulated the most. When you walk out, your other senses need to be stimulated. So light, eyes, stone feet. How wonderful. That's the whole reasoning behind how, why this is built the way it's built. Um, from that point it became uh, not only a phonogram studio but it became a more international studio. Uh, people like Def Leppard came here, Elton John came here, wow. Magnum came here, uh, the, the whole uh, metal scene came here after Def Leppard and, uh, and that helped uh, uh, building the reputation for the studio. So then we have here, uh, that was in the old days, Studio 3. They're all in the original colors. Studio 1 is green, Studio 2 is blue, Studio 3 was red, Studio 1 is now grey, it was yellow before. But it, it, that's how it's also done by the architect. Each room has its own color. At the end of the 90s, Philips decided it didn't want to own any more studios, which is Polygram then at the time. And they sold all their studios in the world. And this, uh, this got sold to a, a private person. This master studio, but we turned it into two uh, mastering rooms. This is mastering room number two. It's the smaller of the two. You will see later why I said smaller of the two. It's not a small room. The guy just bought it as a hobby and not really putting any money <laughs> in it. <laughs> and that doesn't work. Yeah, that's, you know, we know uh, studios are bottled in pits. Wow. Well, you have to pour money in <laughs> for it to work. These are uh, Ecclestone uh, Savoy loudspeakers. They're built by an uh, American company in Memphis. They call amplifiers. So really high end. I'll say. A pair of speakers is $50,000. Wow. I know that sounds really expensive, but in, in this world, these kind of speakers, they are that expensive. Sweet. But you got PMCs in here also? Yeah, for the 9.1 uh, we do with PMC, yeah. yeah. And an uh, overhead speaker, yeah. Hours of Corp, they call it. <laughs> they, every, every room is set up for 9.1 in this building. So we have mm -hmm. one set of speakers that travels. A friend of mine said, you know, there's a, there's a guy called uh, Hank Bout um, who wants to buy Wristlord Studios, but he doesn't have a plan uh, and uh, maybe you should talk to him. So, okay. This is Mastering One? This is Wristlord Mastering One. Yeah. Wristlord Mastering One and I'm here with Darcy Prover and she doesn't have a lot of time, but she let us come into her room and take some video and uh, she recently won the multi-channel Grammy. Um, so Darcy, thank you so much for letting us come in here. Absolutely, my pleasure. So I went and had the, you know, the famous elevator uh, meeting <laughs> where you have 10 minutes to uh, do your pitch. Uh, and I had that meeting uh, and it took 40 minutes and <laughs> from that point on we had more meetings. You know, your patch, like you know, it's it's pretty full. Right. And API has electronics in the patch bay on the back. If something's broken you have to get behind the patch bay. Sure. You know, usually it's, they're in wreck so it's, it's annoying to get them all out. You have to take half the patch bay out. Or... Sure. And here the door hinges on the inside. That means that if you open the door it goes this way. And if you open this door it goes this way. Oh, I see. And you have lights to see in the back and you don't have to unpatch your patch. That's brilliant. So, um, and he, so at, the, at, uh, at one point he said, okay, um, he wanted to do it and, uh, and he put this private money into this place to uh, re-develop uh, it and get it functional again. Wow. That's about a good three and a half million of his um, uh, euros that went into this place. So some very exquisite TCS, uh, A to Ds and DTAs, they go up to 348 kHz. Wow! And then Lev Reese, Darcy's favorite A to D converter. Wow! And then each of the two rooms have standard, uh, their own clocks. They have, we have a house clock and they have standard uh, prism. 
and Pyramix and Pro Tools. Wow, Pyramix. That's really great. Yeah, the, the, the whole mastering is Pyramix. The whole idea was to make a house of music out of it. Which now, after we're busy seven years, wow. it's starting to function. That's the heart of uh, all studios has got. Oh yes. Yeah, it's much. That's the heart of the API. What's on the other side of here? Um, what is here? Oh, well, concrete. No, no, <laughs> no. This is well. Uh, so, uh, that's the control room. I think okay. probably the patch base. Should okay. Be here. Uh, if you walk around here, you see there's the uh, office building attached to it that were offices in the old days they are now all production rooms and there are people in there that just hire the room for a, a small amount of money and they do writing in there or production and other comp little companies are in there wow it's downstairs yeah cool we have one room for everything literally for my phones external preamps out of wow this is an intense staircase some of the stuffs are being used on the stairs What's your, what's your favorite microphone? Mine? Yeah. It's Tefunken E67. Which one is it? Can you show it to me? Uh, it's not here oh. at this moment. What's your favorite microphone that's here? Um, E47 tube. Nice. But I love all the 67s, so it's, it's difficult to choose, I think. Well, you know, the Telefunken, you cannot go wrong with that. <laughs> you just can't. Tell us a little bit about about this console. It's a beautiful console. <laughs> Basically, the the console came about, and the biggest thing about the vision is, except for the sound, is that you can do stereo and surround discrete, and not not worry about it. Not worry about the levels when you switch right. in the monitoring side. Not worry about the levels in your panning. That's you that's know pretty. it drove people crazy when they look at the panner. You put a one K tone through the panner, they go, "That's not possible. That's incorrect." But if you listen to it, it's a different thing. Yes. Because the penner allows you to, when you put something left rear, and after two hours you think, ah, I don't like it, I'm gonna put it right front. I you, you can do that and it won't change your balance. And also, I mean, it has a, a dedicated five run bus and it has three stereo buses and a gen general master like API only does it. Sure. But if you wanted to do nine one, you, you add your A and B buses back into the system. Back into the system, and um, you can do that on the routing on, on the on the top of the console. I just did a film mix in nine one and stereo and five one at the same time. I down mixed the nine one. That's to five one. That's phenomenal. So I did nine one discrete and I did stereo discrete, and you know, send it off to the director, and you go, whoa. This is cool. This is like your basement. You know, when you clear up the session during the night and you are literally alone. Yes. Not in this building, in this area. Because it's like probably you've seen around. Uh, and it's sometimes you hear a nest of something and it gets scary just because you don't expect to have anything. Wait, are you saying this place is haunted? It's <laughs> When you're at two o'clock at the night, when you're when you're you are complete, you are the only one. I know. In the building, in the area, and you hear something when you be scared. Oh yes, all the time. This is crazy. Uh, we're here. Oh my god. Oh, this is like the Holy Grail. Look at all these plates. Look at all of these. Forties. Oh, here's the two forty two, the smaller one. Wow. Now let me ask you, how much I mean these are pretty much set and forget or are they finicky? Do you have to kind of tweak them a little bit? Well, they are all in this to work. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like... I've never seen this many... Really? 
in, in a studio. Like, usually you'll see, like, and this is our one plate reverb, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you guys got six big ones here, and then you've got two small ones. Yeah, the two small ones. Yeah. And so they're all wired into all the studios. Yeah, you can't hook them up. Well, Oh my God. All of them are on a patch base, and you know, if you need them, <laughs> just you need to patch and back. <laughs> you know, I love the fact that you're so kind of matter of fact. I'll about show this. you the control for them. Yes. The remote control for them and upstairs, because it's pretty simple. You know, it's just two buttons up and down. This is the coolest thing ever. Like, okay, granite reverb rooms, they're cool, right? Yeah, like cool. to come in and to see. How it looks like the, usually what the people know the plug-in right you know like the uad right and basically even the remote control origin everything it looks completely different no i just i mean yeah, probably we have, just the I, meter I, I, bridge is familiar with you and the plus and uh, <laughs> plus and minus about it oh, this man. is crazy this is so cool this is really great this is I, literally this world class this is world class six of these guys in this in a room like this when you're in here by yourself working on something does just the moment ever capture you that you're in front of such a lovely desk working on some really cool stuff in such an amazing studio? Is that ever? There are times when I do something that's really cool that I turn it up and go, damn it, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and there are lots of times when, uh, when, when, when I, I, you do a lot of mixing for other people and then sometimes you get crap. <laughs> Sound-wise, sound-wise, uh, not necessarily performance-wise. But crap in this studio. <laughs> but then you run into this console. Yes. And it's and then it, it helps make it sound good. That's that's. Even so if good. it has to be total, sometimes you have to create trash. You know they you know they want distortion right. and all that kind of shit. Right. But distortion through the API console still sounds nice. Right. That's so true. And, and, and you know and and then especially when these high density mixes that you have to make nowadays that I have to be extremely loud sometimes. This like kind of like going through the console is like auto mix. Wow. You set a balance and it just sorts it out. <laughs> it it right. That's really great. You know, exaggerating, but it gives you that feeling sometimes. You go, yeah, okay, well, what should I do now? It actually sounds good. <laughs> I almost made it. I tripped on the last stair. Let me see if I can pick it up without killing myself. I will say coming up is a lot easier than... I needed a couple of months to get used to this. <laughs> I can only imagine. Thank you, sir. Totally appreciate okay. it. I'm very honored that you came here. Oh really. no, it's, it's really. great. This this is ganged. It's the ganged this of four four units. Twenty five hundreds. That's yeah. This is a stereo one. This is us the stereo channel. Mm -hmm. And this does front. It says a left right right and then rear and LFV and and center. And that's why um, when I do surround mixes, I can get them to be pretty uh, loud and and very stable and in the but independent. I can have loud stuff in the rear, and it doesn't pull down the front, so your balance stays different. kids choir and the energy and just the vibe of the studio is just I wish we could capture that on film the vibe this place is so vibrant
Okay, we're having lunch. This is, uh, there's no credit cards. We have to have euros. So between the two of us, we only have 40 euros. We're trying to order. We don't know if we ordered one order or if she's giving us two orders of the three things that we ordered. And this never happens. Like, this is the rarest occasion this is, that this could ever happen to my grocery again. That's this right. This is a shocking situation. This is my nightmare scenario to be without cash trying to order something. <laughs> but this is just another day in the life for me.